It's a returning champion, Elgin Tensity, aka Trap Festus, Hammer of the Gods. This month, we found the world's most hated lawyer, and it isn't me. Aaron Schlossberg ranted about cafe employees who were speaking Spanish. The only way he can save his career is to move to Scotland and become Count Dankula's personal attorney. The pug can keep him in check by raising his paw. Speaking of disgraced Jews, Mark Lobliner has been getting roasted for backing out of a boxing match at Real Weights for Real Heroes, in part because his wife didn't want him to get in the ring. I guess Mark wears Tiger Fitness apparel so much because the stripes and the logo camouflage his whip marks. He gave some other reasons, like not knowing his opponent had been in freaking cage matches. But it's all bullshit. I don't know why he's so worried, it's just an exhibition. Unless he's facing Ivan Drago, he's probably not going to die. Being so worried about an exhibition bout is like getting butterflies before a mock job interview. On to the first question, which comes from 32LH Poldum, who asks, How'd you figure out the cadence you speak in for your videos? I'm trying podcasting for a hobby and can't decide on how to talk. Because I tell so many jokes on this channel, I have to deliver the setup concisely and delay the punchline just long enough for maximum effect. I settled on my style after many years of listening to comedians and rappers who are experts at delivering punchlines. The Smaller by the Day segment with Rich Piana would have been a mess if I never listened to Blackout by Method Man and Red Man a million times. Find podcasters or YouTubers in your niche, take what's useful, discard everything else, and come up with your own style. Corinne Binkle asks, is Kenny K.O. still using Photoshop and still calling it a social experiment? Probably. Chief Fitness Troll and I found something amiss about this recent pick. It looks like the last floor bender did some funny business with his calves. Also problematic is the fact that he's shopping for pre-distressed jeans, which you can see on the right. Those are for plebs. Wear raw denim jeans and distress them yourself. Given that Kenny is best known for getting busted for photoshopping his own pics, I'm not surprised that he would gravitate toward jeans that have been altered to look more aesthetic. Not Very Gentle asks, Which do you hate more? Fat acceptance, crossfit, cali muscle, or quarter squatters? That would be most, not more. I hate fat acceptance the most. Crossfit, cali muscle, and quarter squatters try to improve themselves, but fail miserably. Fat acceptance proponents don't even try. They just celebrate their laziness and unhealthy lifestyles. Most of you seem to like the fat acceptance roasts, and I sure liked branching out a little bit, so I'll continue to make them, until I get bored. Okeystone Even Lift asks, Trap Khan, did Pusha go too far? Quite a few of you want to know what I think about the beef between Pusha T and Drake. Their beef actually goes back to around 2012, but I'll give the cliffs for the most recent phase. First, Pusha T called out Drake in Infrared for using a ghostwriter. That isn't the first time anyone's taken that angle, and it won't be the last. Then, Drake responded with Duppy Freestyle, in which he name-dropped Pusha's fiancé and claimed that Pusha is older but less successful than he is, so he needs this beef to sell more copies of his new album, Daytona. Drake even posted a $100,000 invoice on Instagram. Next, Pusha replied with Story of Adidon. Adidon is the name of Drake's upcoming Adidas line, so that brand will be indefinitely linked to this beef and that face. Pusha brought up Drake's parents' failed marriage, his producer 40's multiple sclerosis, and the child Drake allegedly had with a porn star but has been hiding all this time. Drake then responded with a notepad. Unlike cannabis, Drake didn't have any rhymes in his, let alone 30 pages worth. Drake claimed that the photo was his way of raising awareness about the struggles of being a black actor. Spike Lee's joint, Bamboozled, must not have done enough for the cause. He didn't address the claims about his kid or anything else Pusha said. If Drake really wanted to raise awareness, he'd use his star power to do so and share the picture himself. Instead, he only mentioned the picture after Pusha T posted it, so it looks like Drake was hiding that too. I don't think Drake can recover from this unless he hires all of King of the Dot to ghostwrite his next rebuttal. This isn't the most vicious feud in the history of hip-hop, but I'd rather follow it than YouTube Fitness, and I would rather follow either of those than the NBA Finals. Next, HMS191197 asks, do you wear wrist wraps for upper body workouts? If not, why? And do you feel like they weaken your wrists over time? What the hell is a fitness question doing in this video? Anyway, no, I don't wear wrist straps. I routinely bench three plates or more pain-free, so I don't need them or even want to use them. I also don't think they'll weaken your wrists over time. I have a hunch most of the people who say that are getting weaker due to other reasons. We've all seen fitness YouTubers put on their wrist straps before they bench and edit the video to look cool. But nothing looks cooler than lifting heavy shit with nothing but your infinite Elgin Tensity gym apparel on. 
Sly Tendency is 87, and some others, I didn't screen cap them all this time, asked, What did you think of the whole Roseanne thing? She tweeted two comments that fucked her over, but the one about Valerie Jarrett is getting all the attention. Roseanne is no amateur. She knew that comparing a black woman to a character from Planet of the Apes was going to have serious consequences, no matter how apt she thought the comparison was. If she compared Valerie Jarrett to any other movie character with unusual facial prosthetics, her tweet would have gotten a much better response. I've been making fun of Cali Muscle's ugly mug for years without internet mobs branding me as a racist. There's a right way to be edgy, which a comedy vet like Roseanne should know by now. After giving a pseudo-apology, she blamed the incident on taking Ambien, which is as believable as a brat blaming his misbehavior on Flintstones vitamins. The company that makes Ambien tweeted that racism isn't a side effect of its products, meaning the savages who run Wendy's Twitter account might be moonlighting for some drug companies. ABC cancelled Roseanne's show within hours of her tweet. She must have forgotten that a black woman runs her network. If I had any Susan Wojcicki roasts, I'd be shelving them right now. Because Roseanne's the star of the show, it couldn't go on without her, so it makes sense to shut it down. Also, advertisers don't like to be associated with anybody who could hurt their brands. That's even true online, which is why the YouTube adpocalypse happened. That being said, if networks were consistent and cancelled every show whose star actor ever offended large groups of people, there would be no TV left. There's definitely a double standard. Certain actors, reporters, and talk show hosts can offend certain groups and keep their jobs. Roseanne knows how show business works, but she fucked up anyway. I never watched the show, so this doesn't really affect me. If you need something new to watch, check out Cobra Kai. That show is fucking awesome. Mishman13 asks, Dear Boba Trap, If you'd be in charge, how would you save Star Wars 9? Is that even possible at this point? If I were in charge, Star Wars 9 would have the fight choreography of the prequels, with maybe a little less super jumping, and the dark tone of Empire Strikes Back. No Mary Sue, no Mary Poppins, no pansexual autistic vegan stormtroopers. Just the cool shit that Disney took out. The problem is, even if I made the perfect Star Wars movie, so many people wouldn't give it a chance because the latest movies have been so bad, so I don't think it's possible. I'm such a schmuck that I'll probably still pay for the ticket in the hopes that I'm wrong, but I'm probably not wrong. Danielson, Captain Alpha One, and others ask me about Cali Muscle's lost muscle. He still looks like a poop emoji, just smaller, so a dingleberry emoji. The main issue with that cartoonish piece of shit getting smaller is that he lowered his dose so he can reproduce. The world has enough insecure moronic demon spawn, it doesn't need any more. His girlfriend is up there in age and Callie is down there in swimmer count, so hopefully their conception chances hang lower than his balls. And now we come to the Deadpool 2 questions. I'm gonna put the spoiler warning on the screen. Mute the video and let it play, your boy needs the watch time. When the spoiler alert goes away, you can unmute the video. Deadpool 2 was good, but not nearly as good as the original. My main problem was with the jokes, especially the comedic timing and the references. The interview with Domino dragged on way too long for the punchline to have any effect. Cable made fun of dubstep, Firefist called Negasonic Teenage Warhead Justin Bieber, and Deadpool told a joke about the McRib. All of these are really tired references that nobody really makes anymore. I laughed whenever Deadpool made sarcastic SJW comments, like when he said X-Men needed to be gender neutral, you could tell that was tongue in cheek. The best scene was Deadpool going back in time to kill Ryan Reynolds as the mouthless Deadpool from X-Men Origins Wolverine, and Ryan Reynolds as himself when he gets his Green Lantern script. I also didn't like the antagonist. You'd think it's Cable, but it turns out to be the orphanage headmaster, who wasn't developed enough for me to give a shit about when he died. The scenes with Deadpool's dead girlfriend were boring as hell and rendered irrelevant by the time travel device Deadpool uses at the end. I liked Cable's portrayal and character design. The Carl F. Bucherer branding on his timepiece was cool if you're into watches, and the action scenes were well choreographed, but they really needed better comedy writers. I give Deadpool 2 a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, dicktards, it's time for the lawyering round. Let me adjust my glasses of lawyering. The first challenge comes from Gilberto Boteo III. Hey there, Donald Trapp, President of the United Traps of America. You must pick a scenario. Either A, take the fat poet girl out to an all-you-can-eat buffet, you sit across the same table from said fat poet girl, and converse meaningfully whilst watching her engorge her face with food for the entirety of her grazing, or B, take the fat girl complaining about clothes, clothing shopping, and sit in the dressing room chair while she tries on different skimpy items for you to rate. 
Those are your only choices. You must choose one. There is no out. I'll take the fat poet girl out to the buffet. I'd play my roast video about her as soon as we sat down, which would cause her to cry and put her out of the buffet on her scooter, but not before she pays. Cash Hajik, my motherfucker, asks, Dear Trap Lord, I present to you a potential lawyering question. You have to promote one of these two brands for one year. No questions asked. You do as you're told, and there is no loophole to escape the contract. Will you A. Promote Jerry the Bald Lizard Ward's GIFD labs without any financial compensation while being forced to do his Peck Tears Formation program, or B. Become a vegan fictional patterns affiliate after spending 5000 for a weekend education and promote their ideas. I would promote vegan fictional patternism ideas, but only to contrast them with sound ones for educational and comedic purposes. Also, you didn't specify the currency for the payment, and Argentina uses the dollar sign for peso amounts, so I'll spend 5000 Argentine pesos on a fictional patterns course. That comes out to about 200 US buck, which is not enough for any of his weekend courses, so I wouldn't even be able to pay for one online. Most importantly, that means I won't have to lose my gains with the malnourished stunt double of the guy who plays Hector in every movie. That comparison was not brought to you by Ambien. Like the video and subscribe to the channel, now. Everybody drugs them, but it's something. Everybody tries the gear somehow.